What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. It is J-Rob here from Team Energy Golf Clash coming at you guys again this week for yet again another tournament guide and walkthrough video here for Pro and Expert Division. Welcome back. I took me a little bit of a break but I am back now and we are going to kick it right into gear and get it going with this White Cliffs 9 Hole Cup. So we got a pretty cool guide that we've put together here for you guys today. If you guys are new to the channel, please do consider subscribing. Smash that like button before we get started. And turn that notification bell on so you guys get notified when we do post content. We're going to be going live here very soon. I almost got all of my stuff set up here on OBS so that we can get it how I want it. All designed and nice and looking cool so we can be streaming in style, baby. So smash that subscribe button. Let's jump on in to the video here today, guys. Let's get it started. Hey, -o, what is up, guys? Welcome to the guide. So, we've got White Cliffs, a nine hole cup here this week. We're going to be going over all nine holes here today for you guys. Pro and expert division from a second tee box. And right here, we've got hole number one, par four. So, for hole number one, par four here, we're going to show you guys a couple different job options and ways that you could potentially play this hole depending on whichever clubs that you guys do have here. Uh, but what we're more than likely going to be going with here is either a katana or a kingmaker ball. We really want that three bars of right hand side spin. We don't really need a crazy amount of power or you know further distance than really what we have here on our APOC or our extra mile. Uh, so... We're just looking to basically curl it around this bunker here and over that, uh, you know, the rough and bunker line there down this right-hand fairway as far as we possibly can. Now, that's essentially going to set us up for either one to two different shot options that we do have to choose from here. Now, depending on the level of your clubs, uh, you know, you may want to go with the thorn here. You may want to go with, uh, you know, one of our other options. Uh, now, for this first shot option here, off the tee box, we wanted to play that with a plus 20% at max distance. So make sure that you guys do keep that in mind. But we're going to be playing this shot here with 20% as well. Uh, so if we do play the left-hand side, you guys would potentially be playing that with plus 10%. Uh, but what we're going to be doing here on this right-hand side is playing this at plus 20% elevation. Now... We have a 6.4 miles per hour wind there, and you guys could see it was roughly mid-distance or so that he was probably uh, adjusting for, and he went with uh, about halfway through about, you know, 2.3 rings, uh, 2.5 rings or so, so about halfway through the blue, and you could see he hit a double great left there, so we definitely need to account for our elevation uh, because he was pretty far off, I would say, uh, as far as his, his adjustment goes, but he still made it. Uh, and that's because he didn't account for his elevation. Now, the other option that we do have to go with here is if you guys do have your Hornet upgraded uh, to a decent level where you have as much topspin here as we can use, then we're going to be using at least like seven in a, you know, about 75 stat topspin apparently here right out of the rough because if you guys think about it, uh, coming down from that elevation, really hitting the rough, uh, it's going to drastically stop our ball. So we're going to need quite a bit of topspin to really hit that from an elevation and come out of the rough with enough speed to still be able to cross the fringe and drop. So it's definitely going to be a, a tougher eagle to land there, but if you can't use the Hornet, you could potentially use the Runner. All right, guys, that's going to bring us on over to the very first of the par threes we have here today at hole number two, par three. So the way that we are going to be playing hole number two here is one of two different ways. Now, we have the bounce over approach, which we're going to go over here first, and then we have an approach uh, up onto the second fairway. Now, what we're looking to do here is play this about two squares shy of where the actual pin is. That's where we want our ball guide to stop because we know that it's going to continue rolling. Now, for this particular wind, um, we're going to be playing this at 30% elevation in a tailwind. Now, we're going to be playing this hole here at 30% elevation. Um, essentially, no matter where you put your target, um, you may end up having to bump up slightly in elevation if you do 
jump up to the second fairway. So definitely do keep that in mind there. Um, but as you guys can see there, we came in very, very close. I believe if I would have been a little bit more precise with the adjustment there uh, in the angle of the wind, I think I pulled it a little bit more uh, straight back instead of, you know, back and a little bit to the left. Um, but essentially, you know, you're going to be very, very close with that option. Uh, so I believe I played that at around 80% slider there. Um, you, you, may, you guys may find it a little bit different. Um, but those are the numbers that I went with there. I believe it was uh, around 30% there, power to ball uh, with, um, you know, a 10.3 miles an hour wind, I believe it was, with our tailwind there on GC Notebook. Uh, but if you guys don't feel comfortable doing that particular shot there with the bounce over with the wind that you guys do have in the tournament, you guys could potentially go with a rocket shot. Uh, up there on the fairway just using full backspin I would recommend pushing it up if using a backspin boost ball that probably be your best chance so good luck guys all right though guys that's going to take us right on over to the very first par five that we have here today for white cliffs golf club and that is going to be Hole number three. So what we're going to be doing here on hole number three is trying to go for this right-hand side platform. Now, if we do have like a really drastic headwind, what we're going to do here is play this with the APOC or our extra mile, and we're going to bring it back to the fairway, that little island fairway just before this little uh, long kind of peanut-shaped fairway here on the right-hand side. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to do the bounce over, and we're going to use about full curl to the left there with our extra mile, and that's what's going to get us over and down that stretch of fairway that we're trying to land on here with Great just a little shot. bit of overpower. Now, you guys could actually play this shot here with around a bar of top spin, uh, two to three bars of left-hand side spin, but if you are using that two bars of left-hand side spin, just make sure that you do compensate with a little bit more curl there on the left-hand side. Uh, but nonetheless, though, we are really trying to get down to the very end of this uh, second fairway there as far as we possibly can because that's going to set us up for a really nice mid-distance sniper shot straight in at the pin. Now, with that being uh, you know, a mid-distance shot, you're going to have a very, very good opportunity there at actually nailing that albatross. Now, if you are a little bit further back here, uh, which is going to be one of the things that I run into here on this particular match, is that, you know, I, I was just kind of played a little bit safe, didn't want to go too far down uh, into the fairway, you know, and, and roll into the rough or whatever. So I just played it with a little bit of backspin down that fairway because I knew I was going to have enough, uh, more than enough to reach the green here. But what the problem we get into here is using too much topspin here uh, is going to kind of make us travel a little bit too fast down this fairway. And we don't want to be traveling too fast down the fairway here, um, essentially, and, and get too much speed coming over the green. Uh, the fringe will slow us down just that little bit. As you guys know, the fringe usually slows us down that little bit. Um, but essentially, we're just going to be playing this uh, mid-distance to max distance at 0% elevation here. So just make a straightforward, you know, like one-to-one -one adjustment there around if you're in mid-distance. Uh, you should It should be around one-to-one. -one. So you guys should be able to make a very precise shot here, essentially, right in at the pin. Now there's a little bit of a funnel there that funnels, you know, kind of curled almost. It'll like kind of funnel it up into the left and then it slopes down to the right straight into the pin. Uh, I've actually dropped this albatross quite a few times, a uh, couple times being lucky and a couple times being spot on. And if uh, my opponent here wouldn't have hit a great ball, he probably would have been very close at nailing the albatross himself. Uh, so you guys can kind of see with this image on how your ball is going to roll in to the pin. Uh, you know, you're not going to want to have too much speed like we're talking. Uh, around like two and a half to three, three and a half bars, depending on your distance, is going to be more than enough. Uh, and as you guys can see, the, you know, a perfect ball would have been nice probably right in around the pin there. Uh, so just make sure you guys can make a solid drive there, you know, off the tee box, plus 10% in elevation max distance and you guys should be you know fairly straightforward there in uh at getting your albatross 
Moving right along here, guys, that's going to bring us right on over to hole number four, par three. And this is going to be one of the more trickier holes here for a lot of you guys out there. So definitely make sure you guys do pay attention here. And what we're going to be doing here is actually playing this anywhere from mid to max distance, plus 30% elevation here from this first fairway. Now, if we do decide that we're going to go up and use, like, uh, you know, the Guardian per se, or the Rocket quarterback, uh, or driver essentially, up onto the fairway that the green is lying around, uh, we're going to be playing that at plus 40% elevation, so definitely do keep that in mind. Uh, but what we're going to be doing here is actually playing this with just a little bit of backspin. I probably should have played this with just a little bit less than I did here, uh, but we're going to be playing this with three bars of right-hand side spin, essentially guiding us right in and around that bunker straight in at the pin. Uh, now, it's going to be a very, very good chance for you guys to get the hole in one if you guys do go with that sniper shot there, trying to replicate that. Now, playing that at plus 30% elevation, you guys are going to be in and around max distance. So max distance numbers is probably more or less what you're, you're going to go with there. Um, but we do also have uh, another option. Now, I definitely would say this isn't going to be your best option. Uh, and you may want to go potentially with a uh, backspin boost ball here as well. Uh, if you could potentially use a backspin boost ball in the quarterback to get that ball guide, would be a pretty nice little combination there. Uh, but nonetheless, the rocket is going to give you uh, or Thor's hammer, one of the two, is going to give you the backspin that you need. Uh, now, we're looking to play this with plus 40% in elevation. Uh, now, I played this at minimum distance here, uh, and I didn't really uh, compensate too much for my elevation. So that's why we're going to uh, you know, see us come in uh, probably about three or four rings uh, you know, further forward than you know, we probably should have. Uh, so just make a nice adjustment there, guys. Uh, you know, make sure that you do play that at plus 40%. I believe I played it at like 10. You know, I wasn't even really thinking when I made the shot. Uh, but make a nice one there, guys, and you should be A-OK. -okay. All right, guys, moving right along here. That's going to bring us on over to the second par five that we have here today at hole number five. So the way that we are going to be setting up here to play hole number five is with our big dog, our cataclysm uh, here, and either the APOC and the extra mile. So that's going to kind of be our duo that we're going to want in our bag uh, because we really need this second shot to be, uh, you know, putting us either in or around or, you know, on the green. So we definitely need to be somewhere very close uh, being able to perform a great second shot, essentially. So you're going to see some guys off the tee box here by the way, we are going to be playing this here at max distance, 0% elevation. But you are going to see a lot of guys here on this hole playing this with a power 4 or a power 5 ball. And that is because it's going to really, really help you out on your second shot here. Especially if you do have like a higher level cataclysm. That's going to be one of the best ways at actually landing this albatross. Uh, because it does give us the distance that we need to actually get up you know, and have that max distance on our wood club. Um, but, you know, it gives us the topspin that we need and a little bit of a decent ball guide, you know, to get to the pin. Uh, so what we're going to be doing here is using about uh, three bars of left-hand side spin, roughly six bars of topspin here on our big dog and half of the uh, pullback uh, power in overpower. Uh, so essentially you're going to be using about half overpower, Three balls, uh, three bars of left-hand side spin, and six bars of top spin. And we're going to be using about a ball's worth of curl here, I'd say. And we're looking to get it, you know, shot. right up and kind of curled around to the fringe. Uh, I should have probably used a little bit more curl here than we did, uh, but you definitely don't want to use too much curl there and end up going in the rough, uh, especially nice getting shot. on the green here and being able to putt your ball in. You're going to be at a huge advantage from a lot of other people, especially depending on the wind that we do have here. Uh, if we do have like a drastic headwind off the drive, I definitely recommend uh, bumping up and using like a power four or a five ball if you can. Uh, you know, I, I hate to promote it, but the Cinco de Mayo ball that they do have out this week actually is a fantastic option for this hole uh, because it's got that side spin three. And, you know, it, it's really great for this second shot, uh, especially because it gives you that distance plus, you know, the distance on the big dog. It does have that wind resistance too, but it has the side spin. 
three. So that's definitely a big advantage. Uh, you know, it's slightly better than the Berserker, in my opinion. Uh, so Perfect it's shot. always nice having that side spin three. Uh, but if you guys do end up on the rough or something, or you have to chip it in from further back with the short iron, that's essentially what you guys are going to do. So good luck on this one. All right, though, guys, that's going to bring us right on over to the next par four that we have here today at hole number six. So what we're going to be doing here for hole number six is essentially trying to drive the green. Now, we're not actually going to get there, but that's what we're going to be kind of aiming for. We want to aim right over at the very, very corner of that little inlet that comes straight up to the little plateau of the fairway. So we, we want to be right at the very, very bottom of that little plateau where, it, uh, you know, that little pathway just kind of breaks in and it gets really tiny there, uh, the fairway. We're going to be using essentially full curl here, and this is going to be one of the big holes that we're really going to want to nail the eagle uh, because it's going to be a very standout score uh, for a lot of our opponents. Now, on this particular match, uh, we had a tailwind there. So playing this at max plus 20% elevation, our ball was going to carry us quite a bit further there. Uh, so you may not want to use, you know, full topspin on your club. You may want to cheat back just a little bit because your ball is going to travel a lot further than you expect it to. Uh, but that full curl around on your APOC is going to be pretty vital for this hole of being able to set yourself up for a really nice uphill shot here right at the bottom of this plateau for the eagle. Now, playing this shot here, we're going to be playing this at minus 20%. Now, before, a lot of people were playing this at like minus 10, minus 15. They just kept missing just that slight little bit. A lot of people were having problems, you know, landing it every once in a while. But it's more, more or less Perfect minus shot. 20% is what we're going to really want to dial in here because with the short iron, with the rapier, no matter what it is, it's going to get you very, very close, if not in the hole every single time. Because I actually over-adjusted that just slightly. I should have played it at 7.5 to 7 rings, and I actually moved it 8. So we ended up just right on the very lip there. Uh, but make sure you guys can make a nice adjustment, and you guys should be a okay. All right, guys, moving right along here. That's going to bring us on over to the last of the par threes that we have here today at hole number seven. So off the tee box here, we're either going to be playing this here at like max to like minimum distance. Uh, so you may even be at mid distance if you do play it further back. Uh, but more than likely, you're going to be playing it one of two different options here. Uh, and these are the two that we're going to be going with. Now, we're going to be playing this off the tee box with plus 30% here in elevation. So what I would recommend doing is playing this with around uh, 1.75 bars of backspin here to two bars of backspin. And we're going to be playing it with three bars of right-hand side spin. We're looking for that white ring to be just into that bunker line there, where our blue ring is going to be almost touching the face shot. of the bunker where uh, the fairway hits it. Uh, and that's going to essentially force us right up in and, uh, over that bunker and with just a little bit less backspin there we're going to be able to catch the top of that fringe and bounce us and it's going to still have just a slight little bit of speed but that little nick off of the fringe is going to slow us down that slight little bit and that last little bit of speed that it's going to have from uh, clipping off the fringe there is going to catch that funnel and it's going to funnel straight down in towards the pin and um, that's our ideal shot there is to be able to catch that little bit of a funnel straight down in uh, and finding that line that line straight in towards the pin is uh, pretty important right there off the bat so it is nice to put on your spin adjustments before you do uh, attempt the hole uh, now we're going to be able to use that sniper shot there in a lot of scenarios uh, but if you do have like a drastic headwind or uh, some, some nasty winds that you're kind of fighting against uh, you may want to pull out the rocket here as well on this hole uh, that's kind of one of these holes uh, or courses that you know it's kind of nice to have the rocket in uh, some sense uh, because we can use about seven to eight bars of backspin uh, and you know a bar to two bars of right hand side spin and play it how my opponent did there uh, but he kind of used a little bit too much backspin he used full backspin uh, so just kind of compensate and play it as you know as, as you know fit all right, guys, so that's going to bring us right on over to the second to last hole that we have here today for White Cliffs Golf Club at hole number eight, 
par 4. So we got a couple different ways here that we're going to actually set up to play this hole as well. Uh, and this is actually a really cool hole. Uh, this was one of the holes that I had very dialed in uh, the last Ryder Cup that we had. I actually scored uh, two gold banners on that uh, that tournament, I believe, uh, pro and a rookie. But, you know, nothing really too much to brag for. But, uh, you know, definitely cool snagging the gold for sure, especially on the Ryder Great Cup. Shot. But we can play it one of two different ways. We can play it down this right-hand side, or we can play it down the left-hand side. Now, this right-hand side, a lot of people sleep on it, really, because, you know, you're taking a wood shot option to the pin. It's a little bit further away. You know, it's a, it's a little more conservative option here on the par 4. And, you know, we, we like to play a lot more aggressive a lot of the time on, on a lot of the par 4s. Uh, but this is one of those par 4s that you really can't play it too aggressive unless we have, like, an absolutely insane kind of win. Now, if we do have an insane tailwind here, you can play this with like a power five ball, and you can essentially use full overpower, full topspin, and you can launch it up to where like my second bounce is off that little Y, the furthest left fairway, and you can drive the green. So you, you're just essentially bouncing over the crick straight up and rolling onto the plateau. But what we're going to be doing here on the left-hand side is using a more precise option and going with our long iron. Uh, and essentially with the right-hand side option, we're going to be playing a little bit more conservative and going with a wood club approach with the sniper there. Um, it's not really worth using any other club other than the sniper because it does have the best ball guide and you have more than enough distance here. As you guys can see, we're going to be playing this around minimum to mid distance. I would go with around like 40 to 50 percent on on your slider because it really is about a true min uh, mid distance shot here uh, so getting this dialed in is actually fairly nice what I would do is I would push it up just slightly and what I would use is roughly 3 to 3.5 bars of backspin and one bar of right hand side spin for some reason that was just a, a very good general uh, you know starting point for me to get you know my spin adjustment set and where I wanted it so that I could you know start playing with the location and really dialing it in uh, to, you know, the calculations and, you know, stuff that I was using. Uh, and last tournament, it ended up fairly great for me uh, as we, are, we were able to get, uh, you know, about every single one of them to drop. So playing it with that uh, sniper approach is a very great option, so I definitely wouldn't sleep on it. But playing it with the long iron can be very... Uh, rewarding as well as you guys could see you know you're, you're a little bit further up there uh, and you are closer to the pin and you know we're only playing it with roughly a half a bar backspin straight up in at the pin uh, so if you guys feel a little bit more comfortable going with your grizzly or the goliath here the b52 essentially with your long iron if you guys feel more comfortable with that then definitely do not shy away from it uh, because you guys could make a fantastic uh, you know shot out of this approach as well uh, so either one is going to be kind of personal preference depending on whichever way you guys seem fit now i feel that i'm a little bit better at adjusting you know mid one to one with my sniper than i am with the grizzly uh but you know the grizzly it being so accurate it's almost inaccurate sometimes in a way if you get what i mean uh but good luck with that one guys and nail that eagle all right, guys, that's going to bring us right on over to the very last hole that we have here today at hole number nine, par five. So we're going to go over a couple different ways here that we can actually play this hole here as well. But the best way that I would really recommend playing this would be our left-hand side option. Uh, but, you know, the right-hand side option may be one that we may have to go with in the tournament. Uh, so we're not going to shy away from it. We're definitely going to go over it and at least make sure that you guys know what you're doing and can have a good opportunity of being able to tackle this hole either way. It's really good to be versatile on Golf Clash, uh, especially knowing when to play it conservative and when to kind of risk it for the biscuit, if you know what I mean. But on this right-hand side, it definitely is important to note here that our second shot options are definitely going to be a lot different. So off the tee box here, we're going to be playing it the same. We're going to be playing it at a plus 20% elevation. Uh, and what you're going to be looking for there really on the right-hand side is to play that with the rock or, you know, the quarterback, something like that that gives you a decent ball guide so you can see, you know, where your ball is going to stop kind of on that right-hand side fairway. Probably a good idea. But we're going to play it with, like, 
two to three bars of top spin there, three bars right hand side spin. And we don't really want to use you know a whole lot of overpower, especially if we do have a tailwind. Now, playing it on this left hand side, this is going to be our best bet. Now, we're looking to kind of hug this right hand side as much as we possibly can. And a great right ball here is going to put us in disaster zone essentially uh, right a great right ball Perfect here shot. is gonna end us in the rough and we are not gonna be able to make it on the green and two as you guys can see there we came very very close to the rough line there so a perfect ball is necessary so full top spin there three bars of right hand side spin we're gonna be playing it with a power three ball there with plus 20 percent elevation now for our second shot here on the right hand side we're gonna be jumping all the way up to plus 40% in elevation here with either the big dog, the guardian, our cataclysm, something like that that we have a bunch of distance, uh, but we're you know we're still able to use that top spin to compensate if we need to. Uh, now what we're looking to do here is if we have this tailwind, we could actually play this potentially with either a half a bar of backspin or no spin at all. Now. I'm kind of leaning more towards the no spin because that's what's essentially going to make sure that you get up and over and still have that decent amount of spin to roll uh, and continue to drop in the pin if you get there. Now, as you guys can see with about, you know, a bar backspin there and full overpower, uh, you know, not really knowing where his shot was going to go or how far further, uh, you know, the elevation or wind adjustment was going to take it uh, with that bar of backspin. Uh, you know, he was still fairly close, so that's going to push him up a lot further. So he needed that backspin to kind of slow him down. But if, you know, you didn't go with the overpower and you just used no spin, he would have been almost spot on. Uh, and, you know, would have stopped probably maybe even a little bit shy of pin. So, we, you know, you may have to go with about, you know, roughly a bar to almost two bars of top spin on that bounce over shot, plus 40% elevation on the right-hand side. So... Looking at this left-hand side option already and how we're setting this up at a mid-distance sniper rough bump, you know, you guys tell me which option is better. So, having an albatross opportunity like this, especially on hole number nine, is fantastic, especially if we can get it that close and get it to drop. Now, we're going to be playing that at mid-distance plus 20% elevation there with the sniper. We're going to be playing it with 3.5 bars of top spin and a bar of right-hand side spin. That's going to give us enough spin and, you know, top spin to be able to get it over the fringe there and still have that speed Eagle. to drop our ball. So, all right, though, guys, that's going to be the wrap-up for the Pro and Expert Division guide and walkthrough video there for the White Cliffs Nine Hole Cup. I really do hope that the video helped you guys, and I do appreciate all of you guys out there that have been bearing with us uh, as, you know, I kind of took a little bit of a break last week. I was kind of getting a little burnout on all of the content and working at the same time. As a lot of you guys know out there, I am a professional painter as well, and I am pretty busy during the day uh, and working on all of the content at night. You know, I'm usually up pretty late, uh, and I'm not you know, I wasn't really getting a whole lot of sleep, so I kind of had to, you know, move things around into the schedule and kind of figure some things out on how I wanted to keep producing the content uh, in a better schedule so that I could make things more efficient. Uh, so, essentially, we're going to be kind of shuffling things around and we're going to be adding some things into the mix, trying to get, uh, you know, a bunch of things accomplished at the same time, chipping away at things as we go. So I hope that you guys can bear with us as we do continue to evolve and stuff like that. Uh, but we have a lot of things coming on Patreon. Uh, we're going to be starting to stream here very soon. <laughs> I know I've been talking about it for quite a while. Just been kind of putting it off. Uh, but nonetheless, we are going to be hopping on to the stream and having a ton of fun with you guys because I cannot wait to do that. I'm definitely really excited. We got all the stuff. I've just been uh, kind of a perfectionist and uh, wanting to, you know, everything to be absolutely perfect before I go live, you know. But you know, it's it's just never going to be like that. So, you know, might as well start it soon uh, before later, you know. So we're going to get it done. We're going to go through all the technical issues and whatever else we'll do on live with you guys. We'll have fun. It won't even matter. No sweats. But... Thank you guys very much for being here and watching the content. Uh, we have a lot of bonus content that I'm actually working on for our patrons. Um, I'm going to be putting up a ton of different bonus content this, uh, between text guides and the tour guides that I've been working on. Uh, I got a, a 
big bunch of projects that I'm going to be trying to finish here uh, within the next month. So essentially, you guys got that to look forward to. We're hopefully going to be starting to stream here very soon. Uh, and I may be trying to bump up to the Masters Division to try to uh, get some more content out there for you guys. So we're always looking to evolve and uh, you know bump up our skill levels here, guys. It's what we're doing on the Golf Clash game, trying to make each other better. But thank you guys very much for being here and being a part of the Team Energy family. You guys definitely mean the world to me out there, especially our patrons. Thank you guys for being a member of the Team Energy family. You guys are fantastic. And we're going to be putting a lot of the content out for you guys here soon, so I'm definitely excited. So make sure you guys do consider becoming a patron. We're going to be looking to uh, actually get the membership, the join button on uh, the channel as well. I've, I've been kind of uh, wanting to email, and we're going to email and talk to YouTube about potentially giving us uh, gaming creators. Uh, we're going to have a membership button potentially as well. Uh, so if that's something you guys are maybe interested in and want to become a member of the channel and help support what we're doing, I would definitely appreciate it. So thanks, guys. Thank you for watching and being here with us. Smash that like button on your way out. Don't forget to click that notification bell so you guys do get notified when we start to go live and when we post content. But other than that, good luck out there. Happy golfing and peace from the Team Energy family. <laughs>